Hello, our viewers and subscribers. This is an interview with an expert artist in London about how to sell art in London or how to make it in the London art world. So you would like to welcome Naomi, Naomi Odusa. Please tell us where you're from, where you live now and what you do. Um, hello, I'm Naomi and a mixed race Italian Nigerian. I was raised in Italy. I studied interior design in a private university in Italy and I came to London about 12 years ago. I moved to London, my apologies. And I am an artist, uh, an interior designer, and I work at Liberty as French and public school teacher. Oh. Hello, Naomi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, questions? In just one sentence or two, please, who is Naomi? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm an artist, I would say, first thing first. Um, and then I'm a designer. I would simply say that I'm, I'm a creative person at 360 degree. Thank you. So I'm an early form of art and expression. Okay. Now, Naomi, what is the situation now in London or in the UK for artists in general, especially after Brexit? Well, um, UK, uh, um, London are uh, locations of art lovers. I would say it's one of the countries that I visited with the strongest um, attitude towards art and creativity. So I wouldn't say, I wouldn't see that changing after Brexit. Uh, however, we don't know, it's impossible to know in a practical way how things will evolve. But um, possi possibly we we'll have more exhibitions online. We don't know, but I wouldn't see London change its, its personality after Brexit. It will always be a place where art flourish because it's part of the personality, the character of the of the city and of the country. Well, that's very positive. Thanks, Naomi. And uh, a very inco important question uh, for us. How can new or um, foreign artists from get a foot into the London art world? So I will say the first thing uh, you need is lots of determination. <laughs> and then there are a few practical ways that can help you to um, kind of get into the art world. So there are a few practical steps that you can take. Um, First of all, first of everything, you want to take care of your appearance and how you present yourself as an artist. Um, art galleries need to work with reliable artists, so show that you know what you're doing, have your website ready, have your portfolio online, have your business cards with you, uh, possibly at all times, so that if you introduce yourself to a galleries, to a buyer, you can actually show that you know what you're doing. Um, after that, um, try to make a build a network because especially in the art world, often things work um, by word of mouth, by personal meetings, uh, by contacts. So tackle anyone <laughs> that you can find in your contact list, uh, through your university, your art college, or through your embassy. Um, sometimes embassies uh, do have initiative to help um, artists from their country to uh, be showcased in in UK. So try to go to find any contact that can help you to find other contacts in London. Um, then something else that you can do if you really do not know anyone, you can be in London. You can volunteer. So volunteer like art events, art um, museum art galleries, um, art fairs, uh, find other possible places where they might need volunteers and that can again can help you to uh, build a network of contacts. Um, be ready to always have your business cards with you and so that you can sort what you're doing or your iPad with the pictures of your of your work. Um, 
so that you can spread yourself out and meet people face to face. Good. Uh, which art galleries promote new and unknowing artists? So in London, um, there are several kinds of art galleries. So for example, there are, uh, first of all, it is important to understand what art galleries are affiliated to your kind of art. Uh, often in London, art galleries are quite specific about uh, the kind of art that they look after. So find art galleries that are related to your kind of art. And often the art galleries that are more open to new artists are the ones that they are um, kind of a bit smaller and in creative areas. So there are areas in London like Shoreditch or like the new uh, upcoming um, Hickam who are kind of creative, um, how can I say, bubbling, a bit more bubbly with creativity. And they have like new coming up, um, new, uh, a new set galleries. So it's good to get in touch with those galleries, the ones that are related to your work and ask them if they are interested in your work. Also, uh, another good way is to find art coffee shops. Uh, often those kind of uh, art galleries, they're not like um, set art galleries, but they showcase artists for a period that can go for a month or one week to several months. And often those kind of exhibitions are, are for free or they are very cheap to attend and they can always give you a way to be showcased in London. And then uh, something else that you can do, it is to uh, use open calls. So both major small exhibition or art association, art charities uh, often offer possibilities to artists to op open calls or art residencies. Um, so it's always, it's always very good to keep an eye open. You can use websites like Art Rabbit where you can find a list of those open calls and um, enter, enter your work, send your work through. Uh, major open calls, there are amazing windows. Uh, for example, the Royal um, Academy Summer Exhibition, which is open to all artists. And the Royal Portrait Painters um, Exhibition, which happens once a year, it is an open call and also the BP Award Portrait Artist uh, Exhibition at National Gallery uh, and they are all open uh, to any artist. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Naomi, uh, more or less how much money would I need to prepare an exhibition in London? So, um, if you are lucky and you have contacts, <laughs> it might be a bit easier. Um, if you did your homework well, <laughs> you might end up uh, find someone that can help you and not spend too much money. If you don't know anyone and you want to rent an art gallery by yourself or a shop, an empty shop, and, and start your exhibition there, I think the prices start from about £100 a list per day. So if you calculate about a week, you might have to consider uh, roughly at least £1,000 between like the exhibition costs and uh, marketing operations. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And last question, Naomi. Uh, would it make sense for an artist to just maybe ship or send his artwork uh, without him being there physically? Um, yeah, sure. If it's necessary, um, it, it happened to me and obviously it happens that artists cannot be there. So um, when I organize an exhibition, the artists could not be there. So they send their work from abroad. But in those cases, you must consider that any serious art gallery will ask you to ensure your work. So which means that uh, the insurance uh, it's a, uh, a cost that you might want to consider. And I think sometimes it's with like low cost companies and traveling companies, it might be cheaper for you to travel with your artwork than ship it. 
because of the insurance costs, uh, because of the how expensive it is to ship abroad and artwork, especially if it's an IV, I don't know, installation or sculpture. Um, yeah, it is definitely possible, but to be considered. Uh, thank you, Anomi. That was very, very useful information. And please uh, watch another five minutes. We've got a bonus for you. One of Na Naomi's video clips. Uh, she's showing us a life hack, uh, interior design life hack. Do you have anything to add? Uh, thank you, Naomi. <laughs> Good interview. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And please like <laughs> and subscribe to us. You subscribe to Naomi channel. And to Naomi's channel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we will put all, all the links in the um, description box. So please have a look in the description box to all the links on the calculators and everything that Naomi mentioned. And also her personal uh, website and, and um, social media. Thank you and bye. Ciao. Arrivederci. Welcome to my first project. We are going to start with a table. This is because often tables are unestimated in the power to give a nice flow to the room and also to empower the feeling of the room. So we're gonna start with this very dull and a bit mistreated table. So you can see in the picture. <laughs> and we are going to transform it in a beautiful and interesting piece of furniture. So the first part of the video is going to focus on the legs and then we're gonna work on the top. <laughs> I hope you're ready to get to work. For the project we're going to need some masking tape like this one, a small needle or a sewing needle some thread or some sewing line or some fishing line, a brush, some all-purpose, all-surface, one-coat paint, a pencil and a measuring tape. First, thoroughly clean the surfaces, then proceed to measure the length where you would like to have the lower painted line of the leg and sign it with a strip of masking tape. Nicely placed all around and repeat from the four legs. Divide the paint in three different containers and add an acrylic color of your toys in a raising proportion to obtain three shades of the same color. A light one, a middle one and a darker one. Let's start painting the legs now. Use the lighter shade of paint for the top part of the legs. You can do more than one layer and also use a primer if you wish. Once dry, Move the masking tape one inch above the paint line and with the middle shade paint the bottom part of the legs. Leave the legs aside dry and pass to the top. Find the longest distances of the table in the two facing direction and the first point will be the center. With the thread, the nail and the crayon, create a compass, positioning the nail in the center of the table. Use the compass to draw the circles where you will have your paint to stop. Paint the three center section with the three different shades of color, starting from the lighter one on the external side and moving towards the center to the darker one. Feel free to varnish the table once it's dry. A boring adult table is now a fine piece of furniture that can transform the feeling of a whole room. I chose to work with one color and different shades so to avoid all the issues of different wonderful color or different contrast and that is the easiest way to work or to start a decoration project. If you would like to move on a pro site you can primer the surfaces before starting to paint and you can varnish the first surfaces after painting which is what I did. I varnished my table and I hope you find this project inspiring. 
I hope it can help you to look at your furniture um, and in your interiors in a creative way and find it a maximum decorative potential. That's all for this week and I'll see you next week for another fun project. Bye bye for now. Mm -hmm.